It has ignited a firestorm on social media and put the administrations of Spelman and Morehouse Colleges on the defense. Over the past week, signs have been posted at the historically black college, colleges in Atlanta that list the names of male students accused of sexual assault. Other signs put up are accusing all female Spelman College and all male Morehouse College of protecting rapists. The signs have also been posted on Clark Atlanta University's campus in historic Atlanta University complex. Both Spelman and Morehouse Colleges have responded to the situation. And I quote, Morehouse College released a statement which said in part, at Morehouse College, we will investigate all claims of sexual harassment, sexual assault, violence and discrimination filed with our Title IX coordinator. Our sexual misconduct policy and procedures guidelines provide for disciplinary action, including dismissal if any student or faculty member engages in inappropriate behavior. We encourage anyone who has been impacted by sexual harassment or assault on the campus of Morehouse to come forward and file a complaint or use our anonymous hotline. Spellman also released a statement saying, the college is committed to combating sexual assault and harassment on campus. Our efforts in this area are focused on prevention of these acts and are directed at every member of the college community. Our panel, Lauren Victoria Burke, political analyst and writer for NBC Black, Malik Boyd, host, Heart of the City Radio, and Eugene Craig, Republican strategist and CEO of the Eugene Craig Organization. The fallout over sexual So I'm going to go to the panel. Um, Victoria, yes. <laughs> what do you think? I, I think that we have to be really careful with things that are not proven. Obviously, the uh, colleges have to respond strongly, and they have. Obviously, they have to take it seriously. But just putting a sign up on campus and having somebody's name on it is not proof of sexual assault. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful about accusing people with no proof. And a name on a placard yeah. or a sign is not proof. And obviously, uh, you know, someone was serious enough and passionate enough to do this, but that doesn't mean that there was an actual crime committed. Absolutely. And I, I think she's spot on. Um, it's not proven yet. And I know that the universities want to protect their legacy. The biggest way to do that is to, to do this by the book, allow this thing to play out, get all the details, and then act swiftly. Yeah, Eugene, uh, what do you think? I mean, because uh, it. As of 2015, there were like 90 colleges. So like this is just not Morehouse and yeah. Spelman. The Department of Education was investigating mm -hmm. 90 colleges across the country as of 2015 yeah. about how they handle allegations of sexual misconduct and rape uh, on campus. And for, for students to tie their names to this hashtag um, speaks pretty strongly about yeah. the need that they feel for public shaming in yeah. order to get any kind of attention about what they believe happened to them. So, you know, over the last couple of years, we've come to find, I mean, it's not something that's new, something that's been happening, that, you know, sort of harassment on college campuses is an issue. Um, it's also an issue at HBCU campuses. It's also the same, it also is an issue is the lack of actual Title IX coordinators at a lot of these HBCU campuses and a lack of sexual harassment, sexual assault policies at a lot of these HBCU campuses. Um, you know, I feel for the, I'm not going to say alleged victims, but I feel for People that felt the need that their university was so ineffective, their university police departments were so ineffective, so inept, and actually following up on these cases that they felt the need to dox people that, you know, at this point are alleged. You know, I don't think anyone should, you know, have their character, um, you know, you know, degraded um, without cause, but it shows that if this is the length that they, they're willing to go to to actually have their stories heard, that's not a failure on the people that are, that are putting the signs up. That's a failure in the university. And let's keep in mind, these are universities when, you know, when it comes to specifically Spelman, that are very willing to swing up um, you know, you know, swing up when it comes to these issues. Now, they are very willing to go out to BET over BET on Cut back in the day um, over the portrayal of black women. But here you have your actual black women, your actual students, you know, being assaulted, being put at harm, and you're not willing to do what's necessary. You know, those are my words. Those are the students' words well, that are paying their hard money for anyone, this. A few years ago, um, CNN released a film called The Hunting Ground, and I just want to mm -hmm. go through some of the, the schools that they talked about where students went on camera, black women and white women, 
women to talk about alleged rapes. Harvard, Notre Dame, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Florida State University, where they had a Heisman Trophy winner who was getting ready uh, you know, to get the Heisman Trophy, and people felt so strongly to attach their names to it. Um, I have, my per personal perspective is I don't have any reason to disbelieve them. I know it's not proof, but I have absolutely no reason whatsoever to disbelieve them because every single student has so much more to lose by absolutely. people saying, mm -hmm. you're lying and I don't believe it. So here's the question I throw out to the mm -hmm. panel. Um, and it's particularly important because so often black women's voices aren't heard. Right. People look at us as sexual objects who wanted it. Um, are the allegations that have come out against Harvey Weinstein and Roy Moore having an impact um, and are sort of um, giving black women the strength and the courage to tell their story. A absolutely. Um, I can, we could just look at something that happened here over the last 72 hours here in the District of Columbia with uh, the Bourbon Ball, um, which is you know an event that you know the black and bougie crowd you know attended every single year. Mm -hmm. But what you know happened over the last week or so, you had numerous women um, that attended events put on by this produ by, by this promoter. Um, that you know the promoter was sexually harassing them, sexually assaulting them, um, and a lot of people turned their their eyes to it. But you know, I think because of the climate that we're living in, where a Harvey Weinstein or a Mark Halpern or some other folk that you know have you know, committed, you know, sexual assault or sexual harassment and, you know, either owned up to it or been punished for it. But now, in all of those um, cases, you do have the accusers being public in most yeah, cases, right? Yeah, right? and, 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 and with the situation right. of, with, with the founder, of, with the promoters of the bourbon ball, right. um, corn, you know, the accusers all went public exactly. on Twitter. I mean, there's in a this huge case, Twitter we have signs spread. on campus mm -hmm. with people's names on them. Yeah. So, right. but, look, Lauren, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. what, different. Yeah, what do you, I agree with what you, do you, but it's the university, it's on the university. I mean, the, this is in response to the lack of action from the university. Listen, I don't I'm not a fan of sitting here and saying that, you know, we should in any way ignore this because people have not come forward publicly. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a fan of people accusing Anonymously people without, doing something. Yeah, yeah not without a to it. without coming so out and saying, that's okay, the, this is That's it. the bigger issue. So in, in uh, Philadelphia, the Sixers have this concept called trust the process that they use for Joel and B. Hmm. In this particular case, we're finding that people aren't trusting yeah. the existing process, they're creating right. their own. Yes. And yes. they're using technology to do so. It, but it, and there's validity to, to in that point, argument, but you can't go to the dangerous. police. Yeah. You don't need the university. Well, that was well, 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 <laughs> the first line of defense in a lot of these situations are the police departments on the university campus. No, I'm talking about off the university campus. Because we I know agree. the department I, I, on the campus I, I, is... I agree with you. I agree you know. with you. But, when, but even in a lot of those situations, I can tell you cases off air that, that County police are going to ultimately defer to the agency of jurisdiction, which is going to be. It's going to go the, first, the, and and, yeah. and 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 to play devil's advocate here, because I think it's important to state there are many, many women. We've got in the mm -hmm. African American community, mm -hmm. for example, even students at Spelman mm -hmm. who have said that they are reluctant to bring claims mm -hmm. publicly um, because of the brother-sister relationship between Morehouse and Spelman, and also because of the historic discriminatory manner and over-sexualization that we have seen about black men in the media. So I think that when, they, when people are willing to come out and say this, it is powerful, and they believe that the only way that they're going to get any justice is through public shaming. That's what we're seeing at college campuses all over the country. Eight days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.